Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me today. So today I'm going to be talking about when do we actually use whole class talk, when do we actually put our students into groups and when is it actually a good idea just to let students work on their own. So if you're interested in this topic then please keep on watching. Okay, so let me just move myself out of the way. Uh, I'm going to just make myself a little bit smaller so that uh, we can actually discuss first of all what are the benefits of group work so let's have a look at the benefits of group work so the benefits are that um, you actually encourage every student to be accountable if they have a role and a special part that they need to play in that group work then every student becomes accountable and it's quite visible when they're uh, participating in the group work or not Another benefit is that you allow your students to actually listen to other perspectives. And it's important that we have input from different students and students are aware of different perspectives from their peers. Uh, it's allowing our students to think about problems in different ways, because once your students are listening to different perspectives, maybe their peer or their, their friend is giving them a completely different way to think about the problem. Another benefit of group work is that you can delegate tasks within a problem. So if a problem is set out very intentionally for group work, then it can be uh, divided up into different sections, which different students can be responsible for. Another advantage is that idea of collaborative intelligence, that the sum of the whole is greater than the individual parts. And also, I think that idea of knowledge mobility, when we have a group of students together, students can actually, in a constructivist environment, understand different mathematical conceptual ideas and then share those and share that within the class. And groups actually stimulate creativity. So we know that brainstorming and a lot of different techniques really help students with uh, stimulating their creativity. Uh, we know that being able to collaborate and work harmoniously in a team is actually a much needed and valued skill in society. So we wanna prepare our students for the future. We know that group work fosters learning and comprehension and can actually enhance comprehension and deep conceptual understanding. So they are the benefits of group work. Now, when do you use group work? Because do you ever walk into your classroom and say, okay, I'm going to put you into random groups and then you hear this moan? Uh, because, you know, naturally, I think a lot of students just want to work independently, want to work by themselves. We know the value of developing these collaborative skills with our students. So I've got some ideas of when you actually use group work. So let's just go to have a look at those ideas. So when do we use group problem solving or group work in a mathematics classroom? And I think this can be applied to any classroom. Can the problem be interpreted in many different ways? That's something that we can uh, ask ourselves. Is, the, uh, is information from different sources required? So that means a delegation and breaking down of the problem. Is the problem an open-ended problem where there are likely to be many possible solutions? So we try to give as much open-ended problems so that there is not just one right answer, but lots of possible different solutions. Is it a complex problem with different, many different aspects to explore. So we want to try and create interesting problems that have different pathways that can be open-ended and lead to different paths of inquiry. Does the learning experience allow for different roles or multiple inputs? So when you're designing a learning task to actually be collaborative, you know, does it actually allow for different roles within that task? So they're my ideas of when to use group problem solving. So if you've got any ideas of how you use group work in your lessons, please put it in the section below. Now, I think it's also important to give students some time 
to actually think as an individual. So rather than making this video so long, I'm going to release that video um, next week, which will be to do with when do we encourage our learners to actually do some individual thinking time. Thank you so much for joining me again this week, and I hope to see you next time.